Hello Fun Nation, and welcome back to Funalysis, the show where we showcase the best and most innovative strategies in FIRST every single week. My name is James Osterhaus, an alum and former driver for Team 107 Robotics and a current robotics student at the University of Michigan. Today, we'll be breaking down a preview to the Michigan State Championship and DCMPs across the world. We're going to take a look at Finals 1 at both the Celine and West Michigan District event, where we saw unique third robot plays and offensive juggernauts. Without further ado, let's dive into the strategy here on Fun Analysis. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com contest for further details. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options through their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to andymark.com for your one-stop shop of high-quality and affordable solutions. Alright, without further ado, let's take a look into this Finals 1 here at the Celine District event, one of the two really powerhouse events that we had. At the top of the screen in our Red Alliance, we have Team 67th, the Hall of Fame Hot Team. Uh, their first pick, that's 5460 Strike Zone, and in the middle is 5150, the Hybrid Hornets. Uh, who will be their defense bot for this match. Then over on the Blue Alliance, uh, who we'll be taking a look at as well, we have also Hall of Fame, Team 27 Rush. Their first pick, Team 2137, the Oxford Rebelcats, Torque. And then their third robot is 6101, it's the Strange Quarks. Um, they're going to play a different style of defense uh, in this match, and we're going to take a look at that. Uh, but first, let's take a look into the Autons um, for both of these alliances. Um, Interesting situations that we have here. We see 5460 is actually going to miss um, their first coral right here. Uh, and that causes their Auton to kind of go crazy a little bit um, and prevent them from getting as high of a coral potential as we have seen them in other matches. We also saw right here 2137 is dropping this coral right here. They just barely missed it. Um, and that's going to prevent them from getting an Auton lead, which is something the Blue Alliance would have really loved to have in this match and in any match against this really pretty insanely good number one alliance now we're gonna go back here a second watch 5460 kind of just drift at the end of auton here i don't really know what's what's happening there um as they just kind of drift across the field at the end of auton but uh interesting situation there um but as we head into teleop um red is ahead by one high coral 44 to 37 so uh teleop scoring right um both alliances hop right in but 6101 is going to play a little bit different of a style of defense than we've seen um than typical defense spots they're going to go right over here and they're going to play lg defense actually um they knew that 5460 and 67 paired up at this event because of their ability to do lg very well into the barge and that was the difference maker over 27 and 2137 so 6101 the strange quarks and their long drive base they're going to try to make a difference about that, and they're going to actually be able to pin 5460 right there and cause them to miss LG. Um, and that definitely did a number on this number one alliance. They weren't expecting that. This wasn't a style of defense they'd seen yet throughout the playoffs. Um, so kudos to the blue number two alliance for pulling that trick out of their hat. Um, and we're going to take a look a lot at the defense of 6101 throughout this match as it was kind of the difference maker both for and against the blue alliance as... Um, Rush and the Oxford Robocats um, are able to keep up mostly from a scoring perspective in the Coral, um, but not as much with it when the LG is put in, but uh, in 6101's penalties that we'll take a look at as well. Um, as we see the offense continue to develop throughout the match, um, here at 149 coming up here in a couple seconds, we're going to see an interesting development. A 6101 continues to try to play this defense on the Red Alliance. 5460 is going to come right back here. And they're going to encounter, all right, 6101, they've kind of put this block up right here. They know that their goal is to stop 5460 from getting to score that LG. Well, 5460 in their strong swerve drive say, hmm, you're in my way. I'm going to push you right into the cage. And that is the first instance you can kind of see the referees. Although a flag isn't wave, uh, waved here, we actually do see them put something in on the panel. I imagine that this was one of the many penalties that was called in this match um, and will end up seeing ultimately decides this match. Um, was this instance of uh, the 6101 Strange Quarks going into the uh, the cage area there. 
um, coming up right here at 135. Um, 6101 is going to unfortunately get caught in another penalty right here where they're uh, they're touching 67 uh, right here, unfortunately. Um, so just another one of those penalties that as a defense spot, you got to think about the value that you're adding. What are you doing more of adding penalties to the other alliance or actually taking away points? And unfortunately, in this match, there was a lot of penalties. Um, coming up here at 124, we're going to see 6101 learn from their mistake as 5460 is going to go to score another LG right here. They're able to actually swerve away um, and avoid getting another penalty there, um, but unfortunately allow 5460 to score that LG. Um, at 118, um, we're going to see 5150 on the other side of the field playing a different style of defense. They're just completely content sitting over here, completely forcing 2137, the Oxford Robocats, and Rush to use this station right here. Um, it's a different style, more passive style of defense. If anybody comes over here, they're going to lay the smack down on them. Um, but with Rush's ability to pick up off the ground um, right here at the top of the screen, there's not much you're going to be able to do to defend Rush. So really just got to think about the Robocats. Um, and that's what 5150 did in this match. So as with this, uh, these alliances continue to develop and score, um, we're going to see 6101 kind of go unutilized a little bit at the, uh, this portion of the field. And I think that this idea of coral the or sorry of lg defense is interesting um and although it wasn't the most effective in this match and ended up causing a lot of penalties um i think that there's got to be some more dynamic of a role right there's there there can't be just this like waiting um as although the lg is a big part of the strategy for 67 and for 54 60 it wasn't the only difference maker. They're still able to put up over 100 points worth of coral in this match. Uh, and that allows for there's still a lot of scoring on their part um, and not enough really to cause a, a game changing difference. Now, as we get to the end of the match, we're going to see 61 1 play another interesting kind of uh, weakness defense here for the Red Alliance. Uh, the Blue Alliance knows that 67 and 54 60 both have pretty strong climbs. So 61 1 is going to kind of chill in the spot they've been chilling all game. Um, and try to prevent them from coming back to the climb. Uh, but we're going to see them once again get pushed into the the, uh, the barge zone um, during endgame, mind you. Uh, and that's definitely going to get them some tech fouls. Uh, and we'll notice that the head referee here is going to wave his foul right, um, or flag right as time expires, giving him a tech foul. Um, and we'll notice that as the score goes 155 to 185, the difference maker here, unfortunately, is those uh, penalty points here for the red alliance so yeah hard situation there but really interesting strategy from the blue alliance um trying to make a difference maker against uh, a really strong alliance in 67 54 60 and as we approach uh, michigan district championships and district championships across the world i'm excited to see what that third robot will look like will it be kind of this hybrid defense offensive role will be triple offense will be total defense i think there's a lot of opportunities um, for different alliances to make decisions based on who they're playing best uh, and that's really exciting for me as a, as a strategy geek uh, it'll be really fun to see all the different interpretations of this game um, at both district championships and then eventually the championship level Moving over to the west side of the state now at the West Michigan District event, the uh, sister powerhouse event of week four in uh, the Michigan District, we have an awesome also 1v2 finals match. Uh, we have team, the captain of the number one alliance, 2767 Strike Force, two-time world champs, uh, great team. Uh, team 862 Lightning Robotics. They're an east side of the east side of the state team that uh, made the venture over. Um, and their second pick is uh, Team 8397 the Astrobots. Um, great hidden gem pick. Uh, they did an incredible job uh, scouting to grab the Astrobots that late in the draft. Over in the Blue Alliance, we have uh, Team 5675 Wired Cats down at the bottom of the screen. Um, they just had an incredible event. I was at the West Michigan event this weekend, and wow, it was really fun uh, to see all these teams compete. 2054, the Tech Vikes, um, also incredible robot. Their mechanism to run their windmill is just fantastic. You'll be able to check that out on our channel too, uh, if not out already. Uh, and their actually backup robot in this match is Team 7248, the Tactical Hams, one of the best named teams in Michigan. Um, but both interesting strategies here um, from these alliances, differing from what we saw over in the Celine District event. Um, we're going to see some really high-powered autons, which is really fun. Um, as we're, we can watch that here, uh, really no misses um, other than uh, we're going to see 862, unfortunately, uh, be touching their high coral at the end of their mat or at the end of the auton. Um, other than that, right here, um, we're going to see 
seven uh, pieces of coral on both alliances, which is just awesome to see at a district event. Tech Fikes went out and hit all four coral during their Auton. Just incredible from the Tech Fikes. Their controls never ceases to amaze me. Um, and then also you have Wired complementing it with three. And um, although they didn't get any from the Tactical Hams, that's okay. They didn't need it. And um, over on the red side of the field, Strike Force hits all three, Lightning with all three, and the Astrobots will also score one low, as they'll do throughout the match. Um, so as we go into Teleop, we're going to see a value difference now between what we saw over in Selene as well as 7248, the Tactical Hams, compared to what we see in 8397, uh, the Astrobots. So Red Alliance decides to go for triple offense here. So we're going to see 8397 consistently doing this cleanup roll, taking Coral off the ground and scoring L1. This is that um, unqualified uh, Quokus robot, uh, the, the low robot with the awesome deep cage climber. And they're able to just stay out of the way of their alliance throughout the entire match and consistently score. And we're actually going to back up to 150. We're going to see it a couple times throughout this match where 7248 actually finds himself trying to defend 8397, just taking away the defense. And 7248's like, wait a second, I'm supposed to be defending Strike Force. And, uh, but Strike Force is able to utilize, utilize super cycles pretty effectively. And same with 8, uh, 862, switching to LG in order to evade the defense of 7248. Um, at 135, we're going to see them also, they like to find these spots on the wall and that's 8397 here, where they'll pick up the coral and just, it's really effective for the, the lightning team player here to throw it um, right to get up against that wall and allows for just a, a simple low cycle out of the way for 8397 um, and, and put points there in the trough as the Red Alliance looks to fill up the reef. And although this isn't as high of a level as we'll see at district championships, it's really cool to see at the district level triple offense working really effectively as the Red Alliance was able to identify the value difference of this of Astrobots was much higher for them to actually be scoring at one in the trough. Um, as we see Astrobots here at 50 seconds is going to break for deep climb. Um, Tactical Hams unfortunately grabbed a penalty right before that um, at 53 seconds. But um, yeah, so like very interesting value there from astrobots different than what we've seen throughout the state especially with number one alliances you don't typically see um, a triple offense capable robot left but as we get to district championships um, we're going to see robots that are capable of playing triple offense available at that point in the draft and it's going to be very interesting to see all right alliances evaluating should we go play defense with this swerve drive robot that can probably play defense pretty well hopefully avoid penalties or have them try to play triple offense, or are we going to play triple offense and attack the other side of the field? I think there's a lot of opportunities for that value conversation to happen on the, the Friday nights of states after your alliance is created, or during alliance selection, you're looking to select your robot, um, and we're going to see a triple hang, almost uh, a double triple hang there. Um, really just awesome job from both alliances in this match. Really incredibly competitive. Um, and Red Alliance is going to get up to 222 points in this match. Just great job from them. High score at West Michigan. As we approach the district championships and second picks become even higher level, we have to ask, what strategy will become more prevalent? How will you cause the next game-breaking play to take your team to the world championships? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching this edition of Fun Analysis on the Fun Robotics Network. This is James Osterhaus signing off. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details.